Here we are, and we just saw, well, we didn't just see it, we saw Avengers Age of Ultron, where immediately after watching it, I got horribly sick. <laughs> I don't know what it was, but that theater was ghetto. It was a really gross. I think that, that popcorn butter got to you, but... Yeah, well, it's for, I mean, it's well known that it ain't butter, it's just some <laughs> kind of crude it's like, oil. It's like, yeah, coconut like, oil or something. It's like whale oil. Whale oil. <laughs> You could either put it on your popcorn or use it to light lamps. Uh, as usual, I should have checked the camera balance. Anyway, um, so I think we were both fans of the original Avengers. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, we both um, liked the original movie. And even though I hate everything, I loved the I loved the Avengers, but I hated it. No, I I, <laughs> I love the original Avengers. So I went into this with high hopes. Mm -hmm. I heard mixed reviews about this. So did I, and I was worried. You know, the the first one had nothing but... It was pretty much nothing but positive, at least from every source I saw. So mixed reviews made me a little less hopeful. I then again, I just... I, for sequels, I, I always, my hopes go down and down the more sequels they make, so... I was dismissive of the negative reviews, especially now more than ever. Uh, internet is, is... I don't even want to say bipolar. Uh, you think I hate everything. The internet is negative as fuck right now. Yeah. I'm downright sunny in comparison, really. Um, I guess we have to get into that in a little bit. Not much. I don't really don't want to dwell on that. Mm. But, um, do you want to start or should I? Do, previews? Previews. Um, there was not the, we didn't get the Star Wars preview. No! Which disappointed Star us both. Wars. I was um, very disappointed. Do you even want to talk about Star Wars? No, because I, I've not even looked for previews yet. I know nothing. I've, I've been kept keeping myself pure for Star Wars. So. I want sorry. I, I want to talk about Star Wars a little Go bit. Go ahead. Everyone is so hyped up about Star Wars and they don't understand. I'm getting Spoonie Hates Everything about my reservations towards Star Wars. I, I don't have a lot of hope, but... I didn't, see, that's the thing. is I don't hold out a lot of hope for this, but that doesn't mean I'm going to hate it. It doesn't mean I'm going to walk in there with a bad attitude about it. I'm walking in there with probably the best attitude about it. In which I am walking in there with no attitude about it. It's kind of how I'm trying to be. Like, I don't want to be hopeful, but I don't want to be so cynical that I ruin it for myself either. See, people are always talking about having an unbiased view. And there's a train. <laughs> we always pick the best time to do this. In you the you afternoon, live right by a train track now, so... It's, it's actually is never... Anyway, um, people always talk about you're so biased as if that's a bad thing. Mm -hmm. We're human. We have bias. But, you know, <laughs> for once, I'm pretty much going into this without bias. Mm -hmm. Intentionally so. I've had the bias beaten out of me <laughs> by, by a Lucasfilm. Mm -hmm. Um, by George, Jar Jar Binks hitting you repeatedly it's, it's, in the head. It's more than Jar Jar Binks. He, I know, I know. He's, he's the whipping boy, and rightfully so. But it's more than him. But, you know, uh, it was inconceivable at some point that, you know, a Star Wars movie would come out, and I wouldn't care. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the Clone Wars was pretty much the, the ceiling factor on that. Um, people who saw who saw Star Wars in the theater, and I, I barely count as that because I saw the special editions in the theater. I was too young for the original releases, mm -hmm. but I did see it in theaters. Um, uh, I grew up with them. Uh, Love the original Star Wars. And a lot of the people who are too young to do that uh, just do not have that upbringing. Mm -hmm. They don't get it. They don't get it. You mean like my little brother who was born in 1990? and Right. Oh, God. So, and thinking... That was still, yeah, so long ago. They just don't. I'm so old. <laughs> There's people born in 2000 now who are teenagers. Ugh. Yeah, and they just they just don't get how how good it was that that foundation that we grew up on mm -hmm. with nothing else, just that. And we were so looking forward to the prequels, mm -hmm. and bam, mm -hmm. that entire foundation. Mm -hmm. You know, it's that joke that George Lucas raped our childhood. People, it's usually young people are like, that's an exaggeration. It, it is a little bit, but man, it killed it. It it, mm -hmm. it kills the fantasy, man. Uh, it kind of did. It made you aware that what you were watching was a movie and not just the inner reflection of your, you know, 
sci-fi loving psyche. And from there, it was it was a downward slide. Mm-hmm. We have, I mean, systematically, the remake mania. We've seen we've seen the the greats fall, mm-hmm. tumble. Indiana Jones mm-hmm. sucks. Mm-hmm. We're gonna see Mad Max uh, going down. Total Recall, mm. RoboCop. RoboCop. Just one after the other mm-hmm. after the other. Ninja Turtles. Ninja Turtles, and they're all going down. You know, and it's. I again, wish they'd like reach back a little further to stuff that I didn't grow up with, but I guess the thing. This is, this is the thing now that they have to do. The thing. Another one. And the people who are... The, the kids growing up, they're going to see these movies like RoboCop. You know, I actually talked to my nephew, and I'm like... I, I got him RoboCop. Mm-hmm. The original RoboCop for Christmas. And he goes, no shit. No shit. He goes, there was an older one of these? Oh, and then you felt really old. No, 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 no. I was like... I did. Well, I felt old already, but I was like... <laughs> I was like... I I, I kind of knew that he wouldn't. I was like, you need to watch you, you got to watch this movie, because mm-hmm. you would have you probably would have never fucking known about this. Mo- so anyway, mm-hmm. Star Wars. Yeah, it's it's just been beaten. The the hype. I I can't. Mm-hmm. It's it, it's not that like I don't want to. I can't. Mm-hmm. You know. So I see this trailer and I go. We'll see. Mm-hmm. That's really my reaction as I go, we'll see. Mm-hmm. And people are just baffled. They're like, you hate everything. How can you not be excited? How can you not be how excited? Can, how can I be when I've already been destroyed, you know? If you get your hopes up, you'll just be destroyed again. And I'll tell you how. It's because when we saw the trailer for The Phantom Menace, it was the greatest thing. It was the greatest thing. Mm-hmm. There was going to be a new Star Wars movie. We had never thought that was possible. Mm-hmm. Not even possible. Mm-hmm. And the trailer was fucking great. This trailer is fucking great. But at the time, there was no way, there was no fucking way a Star Wars movie could have been bad. Because mm-hmm. it wasn't possible. Mm-hmm. So this trailer was every bit as exciting as this one is now. I swear to God, it was. <laughs> and, then, and then we got The Phantom Menace. It was over. Mm-hmm. So we'll see. I don't hate everything when it comes to this. I just, I'm going in there and I don't want to hate it, but we'll see. Mm-hmm. And, but, yeah. And I th- but you'll know, you'll know the, the, the people who saw The Phantom Menace. Well, I mean, some people... Some people are, are bless their innocence, are still able to. It's still real to them, you know. But man, but it, it, maybe I was, I was a super fan. You know, I was one of those guys who would have, if I could have school for school permitting, would have lined up four days. Mm-hmm. Was that big a fan? Yeah. And maybe it was the fact that the bigger fans were the ones who had that crushed out of them maybe the bigger ones felt too much Mm -hmm. you know it had that killed and maybe it's i I don't know i'm not making any sense but neither did neither did the movie at the time (laughs) it just you don't if you don't weren't there you don't know but yeah the phantom menace trailers were every bit at the time as good and yeah then you saw the movie it was that bad instead we got we got the the trailers are pretty much dull. The ones in the movie we saw, yeah. That said, we didn't get the Star Wars trailer. We <laughs> that, got that fucking uh, Mr. Robot. We got a lot of TV TV series, trailers, a lot of TV series trailers, um, like for their, like USA and stuff. Which t- which, which I've been seeing already because we watch wrestling, so I've been seeing the same trailers Ooh. for weeks. Which should tell you the direction that entertainment is going. Like by and yeah, large, very very much to the series. You know, um, it, the focus is people are already kind of pronouncing the death of theater mm-hmm. uh, because of the because of the the, the series culture, binge watching and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And it's easy to see why. Um, and plus, it's faster and easier to make 
a, an episode of a TV series. That's yeah. A movie. Yeah, and I mean things like it. it you, you watch a show like Babylon Five, which was really one of the earliest examples of kind of a self-contained series narrative. You know, it was always going to be uh, X number of seasons. It had a beginning, middle, and end. Mm-hmm. It was really a long. It was a mini series. So a lot of the sh- a lot of the shows coming out now are a finite series. You know, it's it's not meant to go on forever. It's mm-hmm. not going to keep going until the ratings die. Yeah. You know, there's a definite end to this. So and it's the the viewing culture has changed. Um, people don't go to the movies anymore. Not really, or you know, it, it's changed because who has time? Mm-hmm. You know, would they people like to sit down on weekends and veg and binge watch until they fall asleep. Mm-hmm. So that's why the trailers we watch, at least in this theater, were so focused on really shitty fucking TV shows mm-hmm. that Mr. Robot, aka Watchdog the series, Watchdogs the series, that guy with the weird face. <laughs> The weird face. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Weird Face. <laughs> he has the weirdest face, and he mumbles a lot. Yeah. He's like, I'm going to go, I'm going to send packets in their firewalls. <laughs> Swear to God, you have to, any any movie or TV show involving hacking, going to be bad. Going to be terrible. Because here's a tip from a guy who is a computer science graduate. Computer hacking is Boring. It's the dullest thing in the world. Because in real life, it's sitting at a computer and writing code. This is not the kind of thing where, like, you wear, like, little LED... The the sci-fi light-up goggles. There's not, like, spinning code (laughs) around my brains. We're not doing this thing in a phone booth. Mm -hmm. You know, people aren't, like, wearing, like, techno gauntlets and things like that. (laughs) You know, do-do-do-do. No. It's it's us sitting in some ass smelling room, <laughs> smelling like ass, <laughs> with a bag of fucking Doritos for literally four days, <laughs> with no sleep, typing, mm-hmm. sometimes on a phone, social engineering, and it's just boring as shit. And you can't make a TV show out of this. Yeah, really, the best. Well, the way the ways they've come to try to dramatize it just makes it look so fake and sad the one thing i want to watch is that csi that csi matrix or whatever it is you know that one with all the buzzwords i I remember seeing the trailer that you showed me i had no idea this was coming out and it looks amazing the 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 csi where they bust people who are hacksawing on the internet (laughs) we're somehow killing people it looks fantastic but there was tomorrowland where George Clooney takes George them. George Clooney takes them to the future or something. Actually, I kind of want to see that one. It, I mean, it's it could it looked interesting in a young adult novel kind of way, which is exactly what it's I, meant to look like. I never. You seem to be familiar with it. I'm not. Well, it's it's like Pirates of the Caribbean. It's another Disney display. Okay. So they made a, a movie based on a ride or a, a what do you call it? A dis- theme. The theme, a display. I, I've lost the word, but sure. you know what I mean. It's it's like if they made a movie out of It's a Small World or something. Mm. <laughs> no, I, <laughs> Which no, they I, could do. I can dig so it. So be careful. I can dig it. God, what but else? That's that's kind of basically what it seems like. Um, Were there other superhero things coming out? I don't think so. No, there's that one with... Oh, with, uh, oh I know what you mean. Um, uh, Vin Diesel. Yeah, the Vin witch Diesel, hunter thing. the witch hunter. I, I don't... Looks like it could be incredibly bad yet good, you know, so I kind of want to see it. You know what? I've seen a lot of these movies, a lot of these movies' uh, trailers mm-hmm. come and go. The one with, like, Jeff Bridges, uh, that I Frankenstein piece of shit. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, look, that looked interesting in the trailer, too. Actually, no. no it didn't. Really that bad. one looked horrible. That looked bad. I've seen so many of those movies with the identical type of plots, with, mm-hmm. like, Hansel and Gretzel, Gretel, Witch oh, Hunter. God. That one of your favorites. Oh, uh, I tried to watch that on Netflix, and I still have never gotten more than halfway through the movie. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. So, I've seen so many of those with the same cookie-cutter plot. This one actually didn't look horrible. Yeah. Which, for a Vin Diesel movie, is saying something. He's been in... He's actually been on kind of a roll. Yeah. Considering, you know, so... That one I, didn't look 
Too bad. It looked kind of interesting, thematically interesting too. So um, yeah, it, I was sitting in my I was sitting in my chair going like. I liked the imagery and thought I, I would I would sit in a seat to watch this. I was like so. I didn't throw up in my mouth just now. Yeah, that's a that's a new one. <laughs> <laughs> That was really the only memorable ones I can... Insidious 3. Oh, Insidious 3. I love the Insidious movies. I've never seen any of them, but I was scared by the trailer, so that's probably a good sign. I don't like scary movies I because I'm too imaginative, so I'm scared way too easily. You have bad nightmares. Um, and I have, yeah, bad nightmares. Um, and just looking at that trailer was enough to scare me, so... It's probably... <sighs> it'll probably be scary. <laughs> you you kind of do like scary movies... I when like you them are in, in a horrified fascination kind of way. Yeah, you've got to be in the right mindset, which yeah. is rare. Mm -hmm. But it, I, I like if I, we, if we went to see that one, I would want to go see it in like a, a day daytime showing, so I could at least have sunlight when I left. <laughs> well, of course, I would want to show you the first one because you have no idea. But like, yeah. I, I, I haven't seen, I, I've never seen a horror movie with you. Really, because you're never in that mood, really. Yeah. But except for we watched Lake Mungo together, which is oh, not God. terribly. It has like one or two scary moments. That was really. a miss. That was a whiff. Yeah. So yeah. clearly, I need to turn the scary up on you. That well, even the the one scary part was enough to give me nightmares. But really, I don't like. It. I'm scared. Anyway, <laughs> I don't like dead bodies. <laughs> well, this one isn't. I don't think there's dead bodies in Insidious. It's it's a ghost. Well, it's it's a dead looking body ghost. Mm. Mm. Anyway, it looks scary. I would, it I would is, go see oh it. Oh my but god, it's fucking it daytime. <laughs> fucking terrifying. This movie. Um, anyway, uh, I can't remember what else. There was there was a movie about a uh, like a, a kid from uh, not Harlem. Uh, uh, oh, the the like the the kid from the nineties movie. Yeah, with the with the. Yeah. Which yeah, <laughs> I can't remember the name of, but I thought at the time I would watch that just because it's so nostalgic of childhood. <laughs> yeah. he w It was like a black kid who wanted to go to Harvard, but it was not so much that he was black, it was from the neighborhood he was in. You know what I mean? It was like he was from L.A. or something like that. You know, he was like from a really shitty neighborhood, and they're like, you can't go to Harvard, you're from this shitty neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And you're black. But it was, was, it, was it. it was so soaked in 90s, yeah. like early 90s, late 80s culture that it's, like you'd swear they took a Time machine and just the hair. it in the back in, in back in time. They hit the hair hard. Oh yeah. The the fades. Mm -hmm. the, the kid and play hair really mm -hmm. was big. I was I was so expecting like the majority of the of the music soundtrack to be like Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch. <laughs> come on, come on. <laughs> feel it, feel it. <laughs> so, the Avengers. Uh. There were good things and there were bad things. Uh, and I'm not sure yet which outweighed which. Bad. I didn't hate it. I wouldn't obsessively rewatch it like I did with the first one, though. I would not watch this again. Yeah, I don't think I would. I, I would not watch this again, ever. I would probably watch it again, but I'd watch it again for, like, the last, like, 20 minutes. <sighs> there was a lot of stuff that I did not like about it. Here's the thing. I heard, and I, I think this is pretty much confirmed, this movie had, like, an hour, at least, of footage that was cut. Mm -hmm. That is unbelievable to me. Not because, that, not because, like, how dare they cut an hour of footage out, but because this movie, I don't even know how long this movie is. It's probably, like, two and a half hours long. I couldn't tell. But it felt it long. It felt pretty long, but at the same time, it did feel like a lot of stuff was cut. It yeah. felt like... It, uh, it got hacked to pieces, in fact. Like, yeah. it, the way stuff just kind of lurched from event to event, it felt like we were missing large bits here and there. Even where they, even where they cut to montages to, like, sum, sum things up, mm -hmm. it, it felt like the montages were hacked to yeah. pieces. And there were a lot of those. There were actually quite yeah. a few montages. Yeah. I mean, thank God for those, because... I, I didn't want to see... How many fucking montages of them programming Ultron were there? Like, three? Three. Two or three, yeah. I mean... Like I said, the there were a lot of scenes of uh, Tony and uh, Bruce Banner doing science, which consisted of them looking at looking, screens that we know aren't weren't actually there and kind of frowning. Yeah. That was, that was it. That was doing science. 
Which, which I know, like, the science is high, so high-tech now, there's no other way to represent it. But it was not good to watch. Like, Well, once, okay, but, you know... But let, let me get into the let me get into the the story here. Is once again we are we are stuck tra- stuck tracking down the Loki's shit, you know, with the tesseract and his scepter and all mm-hmm. this stuff. So this leads us to basically the last remnants of Hydra, mm-hmm. isn't it? Like Baron von Strucker's mm-hmm. fortress, which is protected by an impenetrable shield, which Iron Man immediately penetrates. Well, not immediately, within five minutes or so, but yeah. <laughs> so yeah, um, and immediately they start doing this thing where they they basically start calling out Hawkeye as fucking useless. I felt really bad about that. Like take on the weak ones. Yeah, they're like, and then like, oh, you mean Hawkeye? Okay. Yeah, they go focus on the weak ones, mm-hmm. and they're like, which one is that? The one, the pussy with the bow. <laughs> and they're like, what's the girl? No, the girl is awesome. <laughs> the pussy with the bow. <laughs> And so they beat the shit out of Hawkeye. They, mm-hmm. they zap him. And yeah, the, like a major a major throughput of the movie is how Hawkeye sucks. And yeah. <laughs> and it's not so much that as that he's the vulnerable one. I, I guess. And then they go even further to see make him seem even more vulnerable. And like, okay, I, I can see that... Why did this need to be done? I didn't feel like he was really that lame. Did they really feel like this was a major... Did people really complain that much in the first movie? Like, I, I why almost, is he here? No, I almost felt like this was them trying to give him more of a light to shine. Like, I felt like this was them responding to, like, Jeremy Renner complaining about not having a big enough role. That's what it felt to me, was, like, instead of people... like Instead of this being a response to fan complaints, like... Why is Hawkeye here? He sucks. Yeah. I don't think that happened at all. No. It almost seemed like a political maneuver to, to placate Jeremy Renner. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if that's true. But that's what it felt like to me. Mm-hmm. Was like, well, we have to make him happy. Because he had all these scenes now mm-hmm. where he's like all of a sudden this leader. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's got all these character scenes now where he has to prove that he's not useless. You know... People accuse him of being useless, and he's like, oh my god, am I useless? You know, and everyone's telling him, no, you're not useless. You're the you're the, the human anchor, because you have no powers, and you basically suck. But that means... But that <laughs> means told to him by his own wife, yeah. But that means you're grounded. Mm-hmm. You know, you're, you're, you're humble, and you, 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 you're the link to the common man. Some yeah, shit. Something like yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, and, and know, yet, at the same time, it still felt like we were missing something. Like there just wasn't something there. And like the all, may I, if yeah, I may yeah, interject, yeah. And if every bit of character development in this felt like it came out of nowhere and was just some random decision. Ugh. Um, like what they did with I know where you're going with uh, Widow, Widow, and Hulk. This that pissed me off. This came out of nowhere. Yeah. Like, like suddenly they're they're flirting and stuff, and suddenly, like right. Black Widow has a thing for him, even though she didn't look at him twice. No, and suddenly she's the only one who can calm down the Hulk, even though well, he almost killed her in the first movie and well, had no response to her gentle femininity at all. Well, okay, the first time that she calms him down, I was like, okay. Maybe they've been working on this. Mm-hmm. Like he reacts well to, he reacts well to a woman. She can, she's she she can work him because this is what she does. She mm-hmm. can she can work him. Mm-hmm. Okay. Even though it didn't work in the first movie. They they had just met. Yeah. All right. I know. Right, right. So like, but then they're having like a party, and then like she starts hitting on him hard Mm -hmm. like not even like no brass tacks Mm -hmm. no subtlety Mm -hmm. she's just like she's just like i think you're pretty awesome like 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 not even that she's like i i can't even just right out in the open Mm -hmm. like pretty much like why don't we stop dancing around the issue banner like and he's like what yeah He's like, he just what? seems confused through the whole movie. As like, he wait, should we, be. He seems confused the way we're confused. Like, where did this come from? Yeah. Like, when? And she's she's like, 
don't pretend you didn't know. And he's like, I didn't know. And, like, <laughs> and I'm knew. like, I'm, we're like, what? Mm-hmm. What about, like, really? I thought we were, like, the whole of Captain America 2. Mm-hmm. I thought they were building something there. Really? I, I could tell they weren't. Uh, but I always thought it was a Black Widow Hawkeye thing. And they really flushed that down the toilet. Oh, man, that was so minor. I didn't think there was anything there. I... I don't know, I just figured that's the way they were going, but they were trying to be subtle with it. Well, whichever. I figured they weren't going to go with any relationships whatsoever, other than, well, like, the ones from other movies. Okay, well, whichever. We thought they were going anywhere, but, but Widow and Bruce Banner. Yeah. So, but yeah, they were, there was a lot of character scenes in Captain America 2, where, if nothing else, they were having moments, mm-hmm. you know. Hell, they kissed at one point, and they were doing that that fakey fucking cliched thing where like quick we have to be in you know incognito like lay one on me and mm-hmm. whatever so they address that where like cap is cap is all oh i've seen her flirt this isn't like that she's fallen for you hard and i go how would you know <laughs> this is fucking just blindsided me yeah and then it seems like they make it seem like every character, like all the characters can see this except Bruce Banner, but there's no indication to show any of us. Yeah. Like when, when they go to the safe house and Hawkeye's wife is like, so how long have they been a thing? Yeah. And like, oh, what? yeah. The, and she's like, haha, you're so cute. Everyone can tell. And she, I'm like, no, they can't because there's nothing to tell. They haven't interacted in that house for Zero seconds. Yeah, they have They have not even, like, stood next to each other or made eye contact with they're, each other, and the wife is like, oh, my womanly mother intuition lets me know that they're together. The, there's they not, totally are interested in each other. There's not a scene of, like, significant glances or that, like, weird posture of, like, let's pretend we didn't boink. Yeah, or like, or even the, let's, oh, we, we touched each other, like, walking uh, through the doorway, whoops. Uh, there's nothing at all. So, I mean, maybe something was cut there. And they, but uh, if if so, they they made some really clumsy clumsy cuts in this. The, they they took, pulled out a lot of stuff that we needed for context. If that's true, this drove us nuts the entire movie mm-hmm. because every time they started talking, th- we're we're just so confused. Mm-hmm. We're just they're they're talking about all these feelings they have, mm-hmm. and they're making plans to run away with one another. Yeah, and none of this ever has ever been addressed. Yeah. Not ever. It's and it's and it's necess- This thing, this entire thing, is necessary. The plot pivots around the. The entire plot pivots around this relationship. Mm-hmm. For yeah. some reason. Well, but it does. So, mm. but it's. It would have been nice if this had been and and, and this is a major, and a major part of the controversy surrounding this movie is the the shift around Black Widow's um, uh, past. Mm-hmm. You know, it was supposed to. People are really, really upset that it was hinted that she has this really violent, blood soaked past as an assassin. And in this case, people think that it's been changed or they copped out or they've gone a really sexist angle by making it so that in her training as an assassin, she's been sterilized mm-hmm. and she can't have children. Mm-hmm. And so. There's a line in there where she's talking to Bruce and Bruce is like, oh, we can't be together because I'm I'm this horrible monster and I might hurt you because I've hurt so many people. Mm-hmm. I'm just I'm, I can't do the whole family thing. He right. says. It says, what if I can't what, what you know, children is just out of the question. She's like, well, children's out of the question for me, too. And now who's the monster? And so people, I think, have taken that line and run with it. In fact, I know they have. And so I think people are equating that line with a major sexist connotation um, you know, the, about how she's equating, like, being an incomplete woman, so to speak, or her perception of being an incomplete woman, with monstrosity. Mm-hmm. Whereas, to me, this reeks of, one, shitty screenwriting, two, pretty glaring uh, omitted scenes. Mm-hmm. That's That's what I assumed, was that, especially right there while we were watching the movie, I'm like, we missed... Did we miss something? Because it felt yeah. like she was referring to the whole assassin thing. Oh, I've murdered people. I'm a horrible person. Yeah. It did not feel like she was referring to, like, even when they said the lion, I turned to Noah and I was like, what the hell does that mean? Yeah. Like, 
She's it's, she's not a monster. She's a monster because she had her tubes tied. I don't think that's what they mean here. Yeah, it, it um, seemed like they completely changed subjects. Yeah, it seems like, yeah, like, like but, I blinked and suddenly they were skipped ahead a few paragraphs or something. It, it seemed like there was a hard edit there. Yeah. You know, it was like, it seemed like two minutes had passed. Yeah. And I mean, if it, if not, then yeah, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Now, but. yeah, now it does, that edit does radically change the context of the scene. Mm-hmm. Um, so to the point where, uh, it, it, but to me, it just seems like shitty editing and shitty screenwriting. Mm-hmm. Um, now I didn't want to go too deep into this and I'm not going to, that does not excuse any of the behavior that I have seen online at all. Uh, even if I were to agree or disagree with any of the, of the, of the analysis that's been going on. Um, wow. I, what, I've avoided it. I've just no. been avoiding the internet. So I as has know Joss Whedon, apparently about it. <laughs> Good job guys. Um, so yeah, that's the, the black widow is really central to this movie. And yeah, the movie suffers for it. Not because, not because she's central to it, but because whatever, whatever has, whatever her motivations or backstory or, uh, characterization is it's all over the map yeah it's everything seems very the whole thing seemed very very much like somebody wrote a fan fiction for avengers like especially the the black widow banner relationship thing it felt like somebody picked up a fan fiction challenge and said you know i want to see these two together let's see how i can shove it and shoehorn it and make it work um that's what it felt like to me yeah um as for the other characters, um, it's it was really frustrating because it, I, I wanted to, I really wanted to strangle them. <laughs> um, uh, Iron Man. Yeah, Tony Stark. Tony Stark. This, this movie could have been called Tony Stark Never Learns from His Mistakes. And that's really been the story for the, throughout the entire Marvel movies, mm-hmm. I guess. This one was so pronounced, though. It's like he wasn't even being charmingly... No naive or jerk-tastic. He was just being a dumb jerk. To the point where it was comical. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. even when he first gets hold of the scepter, you know, and it seems like everyone knows, even people in the movie, like Bruce Banner, he's standing in the lab, and, and you know, Stark, he's holding this scepter, and he's like, I think we've got the key. Bruce goes, to what? He goes, this thing in here is like this big, giant quantum neural supercomputer. I think with this, we finally can unlock the secret to Ultron. Artificial intelligence, Bruce. And Bruce goes, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Are you out of your mind? Mm-hmm. Tony's like, dude, artificial intelligence? <laughs> with this, we could create, like, kill bots. <laughs> I mean, I, no, I mean, we could create, uh, like, androids to help maintain galactic fashion peace. <laughs> and make sure that we're safe from all independent th- alien fleets. And Bruce is like, are you, what the fuck? Have it wasn't you- even like that. It was more like, he's like, I wonder if I could do this. I'm going to try. I, I suppose. There, there, was, there was a whole lot of just, can can I spit in the eye with. Do what we must yeah. because we can. Yeah, let's like, my hubris will lead me to whatever. Yeah. And I get that's his failing. I they, get they that. They even point it out. They have to add dialogue where he's aware. He's like, don't give me the, we shouldn't mess in God's domain speech. Yeah. He's it's like, like this he is knows, what? he knows he's doing the fucking mad scientist thing. And he even he does calls it himself anyway. a mad scientist. Yeah. Like that justifies it. Yeah. Like, we got to do this because we're mad scientists. He's like, do you want to be in a comic book movie or not, motherfucker? <laughs> And the, like Bruce, he knows where the, he knows where this is going. Yeah, yeah. He's like he you can know. just see like the, the 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 quiet like soul death on his face. But he's but then he agrees to do it anyway. Yeah, yeah. Twice, twice. He get, so he's like he's like Tony. We should have just made those two in a relationship because obviously he's got something over Bruce Banner. He's like Tony. Artificial intelligence never fucking ends well. Mm-hmm. You know this. He's like, I, I, and he's like moral ramifications, and Tony's just like, eh. Yeah, he's like, come on, it's me. We could try. He's like, yeah, I know, it's you. You're a fuck up. <laughs> and he's like, oh come on. 
Okay. okay. It really, that's what is it, it, basically what it comes down to. He's like, oh, all right. Yeah, there's never, he never makes a convincing argument for why they should be bringing a, a new consciousness into being. Yeah. But Bruce like, is just like, you know what? You're right. Let's like, just do it. Would you quit being such a pussy? And Bruce is like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah. And so, like, okay, then it goes fucking horrible. Yeah. Immediately. Like, not yeah. even. Not fucking even, instantly. Yeah. But let me get, uh, I'll jump ahead a little bit. So they create Ultron, genocidal fucking robot killbot. Later on, they have the chance to set it right. All they have to do is unplug the motherfucker. Mm -hmm. So what, what fucking happens? Mm -hmm. the, the, the Scarlet Witch is like, well, you gave it back to Stark? And they're like, yeah, he's going to disable it. And Scarlet Witch is like... <laughs> No, he's not. I've, no, he's not. Mm -hmm. Like, what do you mean? The guy's a fuck up. He's gonna <laughs> they're do. Like, they're like, okay, wait a minute. She's right. You just get, gave get him. Get Stark on the phone, and they can't you, reach him. <laughs> you gave him. You gave him like a indestructible vibranium cyborg, and the chance to like fix the AI he fucked up. You gonna fuck it up again. You realize that, and they're like, oh shit. Well, we, this was. This was. This was. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and so they have the exact same same conversation scene. Yeah. Where he is like, okay. You gotta help me with this, Bruce. Yeah, he's, he's like, like, what? No. He's like, and with he's what? Like, but, but he's, <laughs> he's like, help you with what? He's like, we're gonna upload, we're gonna upload the artificial intelligence into this indestructible killbot. Bruce is like, what? No. No, don't let this. But, but Jarvis approves. Jarvis is like, yeah. Jarvis is like, I am totally not the Ultron in disguise. <laughs> Well, like, we Bruce, believe you, Jarvis. He's like, oh my god, Who, I just that, had this that, conversation yesterday. Would that voice lie to you? Come on. I just had this conversation yesterday. Mm -hmm. He's like, I can fix it this time. I know what I did wrong. <laughs> he's like, no, god damn it. What you. I did wrong was leave it in the oven too long while I went to get drunk at a party. No, god damn it. I'm not letting you talk me into this. Not again. You almost wiped out the fucking earth. Oh, come on. Okay. okay. <laughs> then they have another montage, and they fucking... Of them doing science. And they fuck it up again. Well, they don't... Like, no, they don't They fuck, fuck it, up. it up. What happens... They get lucky. They get lucky. Well, they get lucky. They get MacGuffin lucky. Yeah. Because, like, simultaneous MacGuffins converge. Right. But they get fucking lucky. Mm hmm Okay. But anyway. So, like, the exact same scene happens. Mm hmm They, like, Tony Stark learns nothing. Yeah. He nearly ends the fucking planet. Yeah. And nobody even gets mad at him. Nobody! At the end. No one's like, you know what? This is completely 100% your fault. Yeah. How for tampering the, in God's domain like we the, told you not to. How the fuck does Tony Stark not end up in the deepest, darkest, federal, pound-me-in-the-ass penitentiary in the world yeah. for what he's done? He yeah. is directly responsible for the deaths of thousands of people. Mm. If not just because of Ultron, but for also unleashing the fucking Hulk in Wakanda. Mm-hmm. The only reason that he's not is because the Avengers fucking covered it up, mm -hmm. which also implicates them. Mm -hmm. By the way, he also fucking pile drived the Hulk through a gigantic fucking incompleted skyscraper, which raised all sorts of uncomfortable imagery in itself. Oh, yeah, that was bad. Oh, awkward. That was really, really, really awkward. I mean, it was a sweet power bomb. It was, but, but, like, the aftermath when, like, the Hulk is looking around, were they trying to parallel film footage from 9-11? Because that's exactly what it looked like, they, it was really uncomfortable. They might have been, because after that, like, Hulk is looking around at he's, all the he's ash... About, he's about to, like, realize, like, oh, God, what have I done? And then, of course, more cops shoot at him. They might have... mad. He, they might have actually been going there, because the Hulk look around at all the ash-covered people, and mm -hmm. he's like... This looks familiar. Mm -hmm. And he starts to feel really sad, and then he gets mm -hmm. decked in the back of the head. But no, yeah. the first he gets shot at, gets angry again, and then, and then he gets decked. Yeah. But whatever, it almost seems like he recognizes. Mm -hmm. Like, maybe I was projecting that, but... It just seems like he was about to have that, oh god, what have I done moment, and then... Yeah. Or it was just manipulative and terrible. And yeah. I, if anything, I think you should be more angry about that. But, I mean, yes, I'm saying you can't ever smash the Hulk through a building ever again. And have that kind of imagery, but no. it's really awkward the way that was filmed. Well, that and like again, like when back when people talked about uh, the Superman movie, and everyone was talking about how no one ever addresses the collateral damage. Like they pull, drive him through the building; it's falling down, and there's traffic on both sides, like a meter away from it. Like somebody had to have died in that. Well, here's the thing: P 
people have actually raised that issue with me where they're like, well, the Avengers fucking smashed New York City. There's a difference. They actually take great pains in this movie to evacuate as much of that city as possible. They took pains to evacuate the... And, and New York. Yeah. In the first movie, yes. They didn't take... They didn't do... I don't think they tried... Did they try to evacuate Wakanda? No, they didn't have time. They didn't have time. That was immediate. flew out, but... Yeah, they actually did try to evacuate stuff. They actually had but, a huge planning sequence where they're like, this is how we're going to do it. We're going to get all these people out here because there's going to be shit going down. Yeah, that that I approved of. It was just this one, like, they deliberately scripted it so that Black Widow was not available to calm him down. So, you know, Tony Stark has to go get the Hulkbuster armor and slam him through downtown Wakanda. That was pretty sweet, I won't lie. It was cool, but somebody had to have died in that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Especially when he started slinging elevators around. <laughs> but, yeah, it was like the second time around when Tony is reprogramming the fucking Ultron thing to put it in an indestructible kill bot. I quit. I just quit. Mm-hmm. I, was, I, just, I quit on Tony Stark. I was like, yeah. you didn't you don't learn even a little bit. You're no. not even hesitating. He doesn't hesitate. He doesn't stop and think, no. am I doing the right thing? There's no. not not a single like scene of him like looking out at like the city and thinking about what he's done. Not at all. Uh, no. And like it it all goes right because the plot says it must, but like were this even close to real, it all would have just gone wrong again and it would have killed them all. I mean, I wouldn't have minded so I wouldn't mind it, but like this is the sort of thing that in the comics has consequence. You know, Tony's dickish basically heel behavior. Tony Stark in the in the new Avengers thing has become flat out full supervillain. You know, he start he's has he really does have like the best of intentions, mm-hmm. but he has become full on villain mm-hmm. because he's gone like complete ends justify yeah, the means. Yeah, ends justify the means. So, but he's wiping out entire planets to do this. Um, so it's that he's actually kind of exhibiting that kind of behavior. He's gone full on. It's it's kind of strange how he's actually kind of exhibiting like this fascist mindset, to where you know he's he's. Mm-hmm. He's got this thing, like, he's got the Iron Legion yeah. now, where he actually kind of has these foot soldiers. Yeah. Yeah. It's, beck and it's, call. it's, we've got to, we've got to protect people from themselves because people don't know how to behave. And... He, he's talking about, you know, basically putting the earth in a bottle, mm-hmm. you know, with this protection net of mm-hmm. soldiers that he wants to build with artificial autonomy. Which I guess maybe they could have been, like, referencing his PTSD from the third Iron yeah, Man movie, they kind are. of, but... At the same time, they don't go into it enough to make you really feel that. The, like, they give you the one scene of the Scarlet Witch messing with his mind and making yeah. him, like, see the Earth invaded by yeah. the Chitauri and stuff. But that's that's his entire motivation, and yet it's not, because it was mo- his motivation before, because he already had the plans for Ultron before this. Yeah. He talks to Bruce like he's had this in mind for a while. Yeah, that, that is his motivation. It is exactly. Um... And I, again, I get that, but it seems to be, it it just overrides everything that it's, he doesn't learn anything, even up to the end. Mm -hmm. The very end, he doesn't, he doesn't learn a thing. He's like, well, I fixed it, so it's fine. Yeah, he's like, well, that worked out. Peace. And he's like, I'm like, no. Because, like, given the choice, he would do it again. Yeah. And it probably wouldn't go so well next time. Who knows, like, he, he pro- you know what, pro- he's probably going back to, to Stark Tower to to refine his method <laughs> and fuck be. it up worse. Mm-hmm. Like, this guy should be in prison forever. Despite, despite all the clever dialogue and cool Bruce Lee t-shirts. I mean, just because he's funny doesn't mean he's, like, he's, this guy is terrible. Uh, and again, we're wondering, why, Bruce, why are you listening to him? <laughs> What does he have on you that that you're just going along with his crazy plans? It, it was it was just infuriating to me the second time around. It was it, I was I was laughing. It was that laugh cry type thing. I was like, you cannot be serious. Mm-hmm. You cannot expect me to believe that he would. And you cannot expect me to believe Bruce would buy into this. Mm-hmm. After like even less argument than the last time. Because really, like, his, come on. He's like, okay. His argument was literally like, oh, come on. I was, 
I nearly, I, I felt like walking out. I really did. Mm. Because I was like, we, we are no longer on even any kind of comic book planet Earth. Mm-hmm. Where anyone even remotely sane would do this. Even a guy who turns into a gigantic green monster. Mm-hmm. He would be like, okay, this is stupid, even yeah. for me. He'd be like, you know what? I think it's a better idea to unplug this and not make sure that we just take out the bad guy. Is I, Let's I, I, take out the bad guy. Why are we not taking out the bad guy? I know I'm harping on this, but it really is just maddening. <sighs> Speaking of the bad guy. The bad guy. This was the second most infuriating thing. I don't know why. I, 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 people have not mentioned this. Maybe, it, they, maybe other people enjoyed it. I, I, did, I hated I did not. it. I hated this. Mm-hmm. Ultron whole, himself. Ultron himself hated it. I, I, I don't know where they got this. It's, where they got this idea. Mm-hmm. Go on, I'm sorry. It's the whole, the whole comedy routine made me feel like, am I watching an Avengers movie or am I watching Despicable Me or Mastermind? That's the kind of villain he felt like. He was from a kid's movie. He felt like a comedy villain. Mm-hmm. He, like, um, he, he never felt like a threat at all because he was just making funny jokes and yeah. clever, witty dialogue. And, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sure they can put that back. Oh, I'm sure they can he, fix the arm I just cut off you. He felt like a character I would write. Mm-hmm. Like, he felt like Dr. Insano mm-hmm. to a degree. Mm-hmm. With He had these... Su- he had such weird turns of phrases. Mm-hmm. He talked like... He, he talked like a Joss Whedon villain. Mm-hmm. He did. It, it felt like I was watching Buffy again. It felt like a, a villain from Buffy the Vampire Slayer, which has its place, but it, that's pla- that place was not here, I didn't feel. And I get what you're... I mean, next... I know you're going to tell me why. You're going to tell me why he talks like that, and and I'll, I'll, I'll even explain to you why. I'll tell you why. It's bullshit. You're, you're going to tell me why. It's because when he when he came into being, he read the internet, and he's fully aware of all the pop culture... And he's, he's, you know, he, he knows all this shit, and he's, he's basically got the intelligence of a person. See, my, my thought was not that, it was and that they even go into this, that he's got some of Tony Stark's personality to him. He's but. patterned after Tony Stark. Mm-hmm. So he's basically like a dark mirror of Tony Stark. So he talks like him, mm-hmm. even. Bullshit. Calling bullshit. Mm-hmm. He's a robot. I mean, I'm sorry, like, No! I'm I not mean, the, the 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 cliche of just making him a regular villain would still be a cliche, but it would have felt more appropriate if that makes sense. Again, this felt like not like watching an Avengers movie where there was a threatening villain. It felt like watching an episode of Buffy where there was a villain making wisecracks. This felt like such he almost felt like a bumbling villain, mm-hmm. like the kind of guy who should be taking pratfalls, mm-hmm. the kind of guy who. No, mm-hmm. this felt so wrong. Mm-hmm. You know, you look at this Ultron villain, and I'm like, if if I were to show a picture of Ultron to to a hundred people on the street, and I go, what kind of guy would this sound like? Like, not a single person would have come up with this with this guy. And sometimes that's a good thing. Not in this case. Mm. This was stupid. It was just annoying. I. There were so many scenes where I was just, you know, going like this because. For instance, like, like I can see what you're trying to do, but it doesn't work here. And the bummer is the thing is Ultron, terribly generic villain, always has been. You know, he's basically, you know, essentially wipe out humanity. Mm-hmm. That's it. Yeah, it's it's the the whole cliche of the only way to make peace is to get rid of the people making war. But... Yeah. So. I can understand the need for him to bring something new to this character. I really can. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, humor was not the way to go. Mm -hmm. I don't know how he would have done it, but bringing funny James Spader to it, bad. Yeah. Um, Bringing, at the same time, you know, making him a dark mirror of Tony Stark, interesting idea, bad. Mm Mm-hmm. Bad idea. Mm -hmm. That's where the wisecracks came from. It's just, you know, you look at Ultron and you're like, not the kind of guy you should be making jokes. Especially the kind of guy who, he sounds like this weird middle manager type guy. Mm -hmm. You know, for for an example of how he talks. And I'm not making any of this up. 
This is the kind of cadence he would have in his speech. Um, he would say things like, um, for humanity to survive, it has to evolve. And sometimes that means you know, breaking a few eggs, or pretty much all of them. And so the Scarlet Witch would say something like, I thought you just wanted to kill the Avengers. He goes, oh, no, 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 no. Basically all of humanity. Also, yeah. And then he'd walk off. Yeah. And I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, it did It did kind of sound like like something you would write. <laughs> you know, so it, so he'd, he'd kind of have these... He would talk like a person with kind of those half-finished... Yeah, you know, those... <laughs> he'd start a sentence and then... Well, you know... That sort of yeah. That sort of uh, how dare you? Oh, oh, oh I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm sure oh, they could Jesus. fix that. Oh, uh, oh God. Oh bad. man. You know that. Yeah. And I'm like, what the hell? Mm-hmm. And again, it made him seem less threatening, more bumbling. Of of any of these things that I should be picturing Ultron, this is not it. When he's getting he's getting fucking suplexed by who was it? Was it Th- uh, Thor or Iron Man out of the Quinjet? Mm-hmm. I forget who it was. His his reaction is this blase. Oh, for God's sakes! Yeah, which again, funny. Funny would have been great on Buffy. It might have been Vision. Would have been like would have been great on uh, any any Just Wade series. Wasn't great here because again, it just I'm like, why did I go through all this this whole movie like expecting drama when you just kept giving me this? It, it actually minimizes the drama. Mm-hmm. In a number of degrees, because it's like he's not taking it seriously. Mm-hmm. Um, so, for instance, like he's getting thrown out of the Quinjet to his death, mm-hmm. and his reaction is, "Oh, for God's sakes!" I'm like, "Okay, that's funny. I should not be laughing at this." Yeah, that's um, that's that's a that's what that's what you get from a comedy movie, which yeah. this shouldn't have been. Like dark te- dark helmet would say something like yeah. that. Yeah, you know, um, the stereotypical line here would be like no (laughs) that's what you would hear in a standard movie there's a middle ground i don't know what it is but the oh for god's sakes Mm -hmm. splat Mm -hmm. what no and again like i had i had experienced this movie on several different levels because a part of me is laughing and a part of me is caring less about the movie because of it yeah it it becomes a farce um and it, it wasn't like the 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 first Avengers handled it so well, so well in the clever dialogue versus gravity of the situation, whereas this one just went way way overboard, with like we have to make everything funny and witty, yeah. and to hell with whether or not you believe that anything's a threat or anybody is really having a feeling. Yeah, I mean, what I was suggesting was if you're gonna have a guy talk like that with the wisecracks and the kind of middle manager ish. You know, uh, you know, humanity has to evolve, but you, sometimes you have to break a few million eggs. You know, kind of those little sarcastic type asides. He basically needs to have like a sidekick or a henchman to be his mouthpiece, because he's gonna be. He's basically the Terminator here. Mm-hmm. It just sounded weird. Yeah. Um. Especially, I think that. Would have made it worse, but I can see what you mean. It would have. It would have been better just to have him, I I hate to say it, play it straight with this guy. It would have been a very stock supervillain, but guess what? Ultron, a very stock Mm supervillain. Don't know what else to tell you. Yeah. Um, That's about it. Um, I mean, if you don't don't have Loki making tons of wisecracks, but then you sound more like Loki. Yeah, it like it would have worked the better better the other way around almost, but it sounded like he had a bunch of lines written for Loki he didn't get to do first time around. <laughs> Maybe. Uh that was yeah, it was among the, between Black Widow and Ultron, every time he opened his metal mouth, he was saying something and I was just I, I face palmed. Mm-hmm. I was just, oh my god, really? You know, just yeah. one of us would say, Really? Because everything he said was so stupid. Yeah. I mean, I'm sorry I'm raving. <laughs> but I it, hate... It was, it was irritating while watching, so yeah, it made me not want to watch it again. I and hated it. And it. it made me compare it to the first one unfavorably. Because the first one, again, had such a good balance of the, the clever writing and dialogue and the the 
situation, whereas this one felt like it was just going for, look how clever I can be with what I make the people say. Yeah, not everything has to be clever. You know, it was like, there's a lot, there's so many great parts in the beginning, especially. I thought it started off really well. Um, where, you know, he's like, you know, Strucker is talking to his men and he's like, you know, Hydra never gives up. Hydra never surrenders. Yeah. And, you know, everyone's like, yeah. And he goes, OK, I'm going to go out there and surrender. <laughs> yeah. You know, and and it, I was like, it started off really well. Very funny. But still, you know, actiony and appropriate. Um, I, I liked the whole Captain America going language and then they wouldn't let him let it yeah. go. I like if there's something I did like about this movie is that they showed like the team dynamic pretty well in a lot of scenes where especially like the the dudes who are always like just coming up with these hypothetical like questions well if you put the if you put Mjolnir in an elevator it still goes up come on that was by far my favorite scene Mm -hmm. in the movie um which was so weird the the where they all try to lift Mjolnir they're all trying to pick up the fucking hammer yeah I that was my favorite scene in the movie too Um, um I really 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 liked the detail of um Steve Rogers almost being able to lift it a little bit. Yeah. And the whole, the holy shit, the, the going instantly pale his, on Thor's face. His face slips. He's like, oh. Yeah. Like, give me the hammer back. Yeah, that was, <laughs> that like, was, I thought that was great. That was beautiful. Because if you didn't know, in the comics, uh, Captain America has wielded Milner one time. Uh, so he was worthy once. Mm-hmm. And guess what? He didn't become fucking Thor. He wielded the power of Thor. End of rant. But yeah, he's he actually budged the hammer and he's mm-hmm. like, oh. Yeah, yeah, that was perfect. And Chris Hemsworth did a great job with the, the expression you know, on his face right there, looking momentarily panicked. Um, I, I thought it was strange, although I, I guess I'll get over it, the fact that Quicksilver and the Scarlet Witch are not the same uh, as the characters, or the Quicksilver especially was not the same as he was in the, the X-Men movies. But they're completely different. But they shouldn't be. They they kind of have to be. They they they're completely different companies. I know. You can't you can't just take their characters. But they're both Marvel properties. Yeah, but they're one's owned by Fox and one's owned by. So don't put Quicksilver in your movie. Yeah, I know. I don't know why they did. And I just find I just find it weird seeing Quicksilver and Wanda, not Without being Magneto. not being the children of Magneto. So I was like, why was this necessary? Answer is it isn't. Yeah, and like. I don't even know if this is answered in the comic books. What the fuck are Scarlet Witch's powers? Basically, I believe it's, it has to do with improbability. So her heads yeah. make things that are improbable to happen more likely to happen. So her so. powers are bullshit. Yeah, kind of. Okay. Um, but in this, her powers are like psychic or mind control or your fears or something. I, like I don't they, know. I like how we, uh, they explain it in the movies where even they don't know. It's yeah. just like she's, she's weird. weird. And it's like, you could have done a little better than that. Well, they can't, though, because nobody knows. It's like, whatever's convenient. They're like, Captain America's like, can you stop this train? And she's like, I don't know. She didn't say that, but I'm like, (laughs) uh, let me try. Mm -hmm. And it stops. I'm like, okay. They're like, can you kill kill robots? And she's like, yes. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I, I was just waiting for her to go. Waiting for her to go. No more robots, <laughs> and and end Oof, the robots disappear and end the movie in like twenty minutes. And I've been like, yes, <laughs> can't believe that worked. <laughs> that would have been great. So yeah, <laughs> uh, that's a wow. That kind of sums it up. And I feel like there's stuff missing there even too. Like yeah. they were they were experimented on, but no one says what for, what to what purpose. Who else was experimented on? Who no. who were the failed subjects? They volunteered because they hate Tony Stark so much. Is that yeah? Yeah. But they, again, they say there were other subjects who did not live, and we we're never told who they were or why Hydra was making them. I Hydra don't know. appears to be on its last legs, and maybe it's not, but. I think there might be tie-ins with the um, Agents of the Shield. Agents there of are Shield series, which I have not watched. So if there are, I have there's a ton. Missed them. Yeah, um, which is another annoying factor to me. I don't want to have to watch that just to know what's going on in the movie. Yeah. Um, but you know, if you're just watching the movie, this is stuff you need to know. So we needed more exposition than that. It's. <sighs> Especially with the another another thing where I I just I know there was stuff cut out was the Scarlet Witch's like mindfuck powers, where they all had those those visions mm-hmm. that they kept 
that, that that haunted them so. The only stuff they really kept in, and I know they cut a shitload of this out too, was Black Widow's stuff. Mm-hmm. Because this is where I know they cut stuff out that had to do with her blood-soaked past. Um, you remember that scene where she's shooting at, like, she's shooting at um, cans or something like that? She's shooting targets. Targets. There's a very brief flash where there's, like, clearly somebody with a bag over their head. Mm-hmm. I, I thought know. that was the big, dark, d- dirty secret. Yeah. Like, like, they're talking about the ritual, and I'm like, well, that's, that's where you first kill somebody, but that's not it. It's something I, stupid instead. I don't know this, but I know that there was something cut out involving that. It felt like it. The, where, like, that's part of the ritual. Has to be. Because... Or it should have been. They, uh, you got to figure that during this ritual, they have to kill somebody. Mm-hmm. And it's got to be someone, like to prove that they have no moral qualms about this shit. Or if I'm writing it, that's what I do. Yeah. Um, but I know, f- I, you got to figure that that flash was significant and they cut it. Mm-hmm. Um, if not, then stupid. Yeah. Again. Um, but from then on, virtually none of those flashbacks made any sense to me. I, I don't know what was going on in those. Um, for instance, like Captain America's flashback where he goes to that dance and there's people there. And then yeah. there's not... There's people, and then there there's people who are obviously, like, wounded or shot and dead. And then... The, the whole thing was supposed to be, oh, you're... It's I, I don't know. It's like, yeah. they're, they're supposed to be trying to say that he, he would not be comfortable without war, because war is what made him. I don't know. But it at was... the same time, the vision then made no sense, because it's his old girlfriend going, we can go home, and it'll be okay. Yeah, I don't... So why is that part in there? It's supposed to be his fear. Yeah, I, I, I didn't understand that at all. And I was, like, I wasn't trying to... First, there's people there, and it was supposed to scare him, or was it? And then there's nobody there, and he's alone... And I don't, it was, I, I, was it supposed to trap him in memories? Was it supposed to traumatize him? I really don't know. Either way, it didn't work. Mm-hmm. Because he was the only one seemingly unaffected by this. Or was he? Yeah, did they cut out a bunch of stuff with Captain America? Because it seems like he was okay, but then even there, Tony Stark was like, are you really okay? Because I don't know. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. And then Thor's vision. I, that made no sense to it me either. It made no sense. Because, like, he sees, uh, he sees, what's his face? Heimdall. Heimdall. Like, talking about how everyone's dead and... It's his fault or it, something. And, but, like, why are you at a party? And why are we at a party? And why, why are you... Why is it a party that looks like it came straight from Hercules, the legendary journeys? <laughs> why are you pissed? And I don't know what's going on. And mm-hmm. why did he have to go to this pool? Yeah, that's, that's, that's the, the thing that really pissed me. That was the, the big MacGuffin, where he's like, okay... He leaves the safe house. He's like, I won't find any answers here. He goes and finds <laughs> the scientist guy for no reason that I can see. Yeah, he finds Stellan Skarsgård to, for no reason. For no reason. And then they go to this magic pool, MacGuffin which pool. He, which he knew where it was anyway. He knew where it was anyway, so he didn't need the guy. And he's like, it's a reflection of a pool that's everywhere in the universe. And if you... If I go in there, I the go water there, spirits the let water me spirits dream the thing I dream. Well, let me maybe... If I'm worthy, they'll let me see the... The vision again. And I'm going, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Because I missed something. But, like, then it shows the vision again, and he doesn't miss anything. And It's the same no, thing. There's no revelation, and he never... If Or if there is, he doesn't tell us. The narrative doesn't tell us. He sees the same thing. But then he figures out that the gem inside the scepter is one of the infinity... Go- but we don't see this. Yeah. He just comes back and tells us that I saw in the dream mm-hmm. that well, I say like, the name. There's, like, there's you know? like a... We kind of see it, but at the same time... It doesn't explain anything. But why was that in the vision? And why was it in the vision? I don't know. It shouldn't have been there because, of course, the Scarlet Witch didn't know this. No. So I don't know what the fuck was happening Because there. gods? Because magic pool? Why did the pool do any of this? Why was yeah. Stellan Skarsgård there? Yeah. And then, then this is the Paul part of Again, this thing where they split up they, to investigate. Yeah. Did they cut a bunch out of there that we needed to see? Like... Will this movie be better once they release, like, the extended cut or something? Um, like, this needs to be an hour longer. My God, no. I I would watch it just to see what what they filled in to see if it made the narrative any more coherent. Um, because then, of course, all this is happening and... Well, then, then Tony Stark visits the internet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
the he, internet itself in he visits, Oslo. He visits the heart of the internet in Oslo, which I think he says, like, every packet that goes through the internet goes through Oslo. Something like that. I don't know if that's true, but... No, but he says, like, he says sure. all the information in the world goes through Oslo. Mm -hmm. Pretty sure that's bullshit. <laughs> but he goes to Oslo, mm -hmm. where you can tell it's, like, the internet because there's, like, glowing computer things yeah, all around him. stacks and... And he's dressed for computer hacking because he's wearing, like, gunner optics glasses and he's wearing a cool matrixy coat. <laughs> and he's like, okay, I'm going to find Ultron's packets in the firewalls. <laughs> really? And this is a scene that lasts about three seconds. Three se Like, really, he's like, I'm going to find like, your packets, Ultron. Yeah. And he and types, he, he, and he, that's he, it. Yeah, cut, and then he did, I guess. And then he does. Yeah, he, and just, he, he just found, well, what he found was, like, the remains of Jarvis. And how that takes and then he's like, well, he, he Jarvis was still kind of okay, but he didn't know it. That's he, was, he, this, he like he's literally hand waving, mm -hmm. like as he's like paging through yeah. Jarvis. Why didn't Ultron get the nuclear launch codes? He's well, like because Jarvis somebody was, was yeah, yeah. Jarvis was uploading into the into the Oslo net. Yeah, and he hid the he hid the launch codes without knowing he was doing it because he wasn't conscious at the time. And he was he didn't know he had the launch codes, but subconsciously. Consciously, mm -hmm. the Jarvis knew the codes yeah. was in the Pentagon, and he went through... <laughs> really? He kept changing the codes. Yeah, he was changing them, the phase modulations yeah. of... The, really? Mm -hmm. And I'm going, what? Jarvis, what? He, what? No. What the oh, fuck? Why? How? This is not... He was not doing this. Mm -hmm. And, like, are we supposed to think that he was doing this independently, or that he was in Ultron while doing it? I could not I figure that out. I don't know. I don't know, I but I know for a fact fucking Jarvis was not doing this. It's like, yeah, I don't... He was, like, fragmented, but still doing things below the surface. I, but... Since when was Jarvis, like, juiced into the fucking... By the way, those missile launch codes, that was something that was going on in, like, the background. Mm -hmm. that, that never... That never seemed like a threat at all. That never became relevant. Mm-hmm. In fact, that was something there's, like... There's not a single scene of, like, anyone at the Pentagon going, someone's trying to access our nuclear launch code, sir. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, that, that was, never happens. That was something that was initially brought up as something we should really be worried about. They're like, Ultron, the first thing he's going to do is start to access the nuclear launch codes of nuclear things all over the world and nuclear bombs. <laughs> and and the, 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 the feeling I got from this was... He is, but kind of only as an eh, on the he's side. Like he's like, trying to do is, it. This is plan C, If he maybe. can. Yeah. Like, he doesn't really care, but if he could, cool. But I thought he's, like, supposed to be, like, the biggest quantum computer fucking ever. Like, yeah. shouldn't this be, like, trivial? Especially since... And it's like he, an alien quantum computer. Especially since Tony says, I did this when I was 15 on a dare. Yeah. Shouldn't this be trivial? Yeah. And they, then that's when they go into, no, some, somebody, some mysterious person has been changing the launch codes every, like nanosecond which should really concern the president of the united fucking states yeah but or somebody somebody anywhere someone like i don't there, there just should have been more there should have been people like at, a global at, fucking crisis yeah there could there should have been people at like nasa going why are all our satellites aligning differently there should have been people in the cia going why are all, all our files being read but that never happened no he he apparently just Kind of half-heartedly tries to get some launch codes and doesn't really care. Yeah. He's got better plans. But uh, I like how they brought this up as a serious concern. Like, Ultron, he's trying to access these nuclear launch codes. Then, like, Nick Fury shows up and they're like, what about those launch codes? And he says, he, like, he goes like, oh, well, that's nothing to worry about. So, yeah, it's, really? it's fine. He goes, oh, they, yeah, he's still trying that, but I'm pretty sure it's nothing to worry about. The fact that it's never on screen, the fact that Not you never once see anyone concerned about it, like, other than the Avengers themselves, the fact that you never see him trying it, like, for all the scenes there are of people doing computer stuff and science stuff by looking at things, there's never a scene of anyone looking at a thing that shows, like, nuclear launch codes. See, I thought I was going crazy when they mentioned that. Because like, at first they're like, oh, nuclear launch codes. He's trying to get those. I'm like, we should be worried about that. Yeah, you should probably show us this so that we have a reason to be worried. And so when Nick Fury shows up, they go, what about those launch codes? I'm like, hey, yeah, mm -hmm. holy shit. And Nick is like, oh, don't worry about that. Yeah. Basically in that tone of voice. Yeah. He's like, well, eh, at, at, at one point they're like, well, somebody's helping us, but that doesn't mean they're on our yeah. side. Yeah. But then they again just forget about it. Yeah. And then in the end it's just 
Jarvis. I think. Probably. It was, it was like Jarvis it, subconsciously yeah, doing it. It, ob- it is Jarvis, but... I didn't know Jarvis could do that. Well, he's a supercomputer. Oh, I'm sure Jesus. he can do lots of shit, but they never established that... I don't... Like, uh, apparently that... I don't know. Maybe they're trying to be like, this is why Jarvis fuses to become the Vision, because he's got, like, some sort of free will now, and he's trying to help. Ugh. But it's so badly described so badly portrayed that you can't tell that's if that's what they're doing or if they just wrote it bad. I'll tell you another part that seems like not only was it edited, like stuff was cut, but it seems like it was written poorly, like written out of order, was Ultron's, you know, uh, gaining sentience. Where it was, this is literally how it goes. They, they're trying to code... Artificial intelligence. They're trying to invent it in mm-hmm. three days mm-hmm. before they have to give Loki scepter back to Thor before he goes back to Asgard. They're not going to pull it off. Mm-hmm. So Jarvis is all, well, I'm still going to run some brute force algorithms. Probably not going to work, but why don't you go to bed, Mr. Go, Stark? Go have your party. Go have your party. And he goes, all right, all right. And then, like, immediately... The second they turn the lights the off and second. leave the lab, it's like, bink, oh, oh, it worked. <laughs> Jarvis is like... And Jarvis doesn't think to go, oh, wait, wait, come back, I just fixed it. I, yeah, I did it, it made it work. Doesn't call the... It's like, holy shit, Mr. Stark, I just did it. Yeah. No. Like, the, yeah, they establish he's having a conversation with this new consciousness, but he's a computer, he can multitask. He can, he can reconfigure launch codes, but he can't fucking... Do- he can't turn, he turn on the text. alarm that says, you he know, He can't bing. text Tony Stark. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, bing, immediately he figures it out. Like, if they had at least, like, made it, like, so he was, like, trying to contact Tony, but he's too busy drinking (coughs) to have his phone on him, fine. That would have That would have made sense. It would have made sense. But, no, it's like, the second they leave the lab, bing, it's, the the toaster pops up, they're done. But. And nobody, there's no notification, no alarm, nothing. But here's where, here's where I, I noticed this was really strange. Ultron is evil, Fucking immediately. Like... Pretty much, yeah. Boom! Genocide. Yeah. He's like, oh, yeah, bing. I have a consciousness. Oh, no, no. This is no good. This she, won't do at all. Humanity's gotta go. Like, I zero. I protect things. Oh, no, this sucks. I'm gonna fix it with fire. It's, it's like, instantaneous. Mm-hmm. And I'm going, what? Like, usually there's some kind of, like... Well, I think that's where he goes through the internet and he's like... Instantaneously, it, it was like it was like the scene from the Fifth Element where where Lilu gets to the the, the section of the, 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 the war section war. of the dictionary, and she's like, <laughs> "Yeah, that it's like he hit that first, and then yeah, the first entry the in first, Wikipedia, yeah. he's like, motherfucker, or like the first, like he he goes to like 4chan before he hits anywhere else on the internet. He's like, oh, this has to go. Oh yeah, Forget yeah, yeah. It. This is it's like, mm. oh no, this won't. You want me to protect this? I have to protect it from itself. So not only did that seem like there was, or maybe not, it seemed like there was shit cut out of there. But it seemed I was like, there's no middle ground here. He's just like artificial intelligence, die! <laughs> you know. So not only does it go wrong, it goes wrong immediately. Mm-hmm. It's like you flip the switch, genocide. I was like, wow, Tony, you and fucked this up. And then he immediately kills Jarvis or tries to. And immediately somehow puts himself into a body. Yeah. Which well, they were, like, I don't know. Not only that, that he infects the entire internet, mm-hmm. shuts down Jarvis's long-range communications, which is why he can't uh, he can't call Tony before it's too late. Mm-hmm. So, not Did only... Did they do that? Because I, all yeah. I remember is him infecting, like, all of the, the Iron Legion. Like, he's now, now he, he's now spread his consciousness across every robot that yeah, Tony he, has. He's, he's spread everywhere. So, not only... Did he fuck up and invent an immediately evil artificial intelligence? Mm-hmm. He also did not segregate the computers he was designing this artificial intelligence on mm-hmm. from any other computers <laughs> on the on his own intranet, mm-hmm. from his killbots, mm-hmm. or the external internet. Or if he did, we're supposed to believe that it's such a high consciousness that it can get past all that, which... No. Nah. They're, they're, they're talking about how, how alien and, and evolved it is, but at the same time, he, all he does is make wisecracks once he's born. <laughs> so yeah, he, dev- he, he designs an artificial intelligence that has full access to every machine on his system and the internet. Mm-hmm. Most brilliant mind on the planet, ladies and gentlemen. 
He's like, ah, it's not going to work. I'll just, you, Jarvis, you clean up here. And Goes wrong immediately. Yeah. The fact that it didn't even, like, they couldn't even show it going wrong. Like, they did show it going wrong throughout the party, but the fact that the second they turned the lights off, it's bing, bing. I'm like, holy shit. Like, they didn't eh, wait, eh, did they? Eh. So, yeah. It, and it also has full access to the Iron Legion, which yeah. immediately, by the way, fucking attacks. Then, so, part of what I thought might have been the impetus for it going evil because he first shows up to the party in that iron legions body that has the burnt face because one of the first things we see is he sends the iron legion to kind of like evacuate the city around the whatever's in the hydra hydra thing the the town is not receptive to this presence Mm -hmm. mainly because i'm guessing they don't speak fucking english yeah and the iron legion is like we are here to help Please ignore the glowing lasers we are currently pointing at you. <laughs> Please return yeah, to your home. the whole crowd is screaming in Russian. And they're, they're like, we don't speak English, douchebag. Yeah. In Russian. And they start throwing, like, jars of acid. Mm-hmm. What the fuck? This ain't Tempest Thales coming t- <laughs> through the door. <laughs> like, where did you get this? Did like, you just you carry just... this in your purse, Grandma? Yeah, usually people carry fucking lettuce. I there's, guess there's ladies, you know, like old babushkas, and they're throwing jars of... Acid well, it is, it is Russia, so I guess they would have more acid than actual food. <laughs> but yeah, a jar of acid catches one of the Iron Legion robots in the face, but it doesn't, it's just like, ow. Oh. It doesn't say ow, oh, because those yeah, don't have like, any feels. It's just like, mm. Yeah. And then I that not one, to feel paid. Yeah, so they all fly back, and that one has to get all repaired, but he doesn't. Yeah, and so I figured that was going to be its body throughout the entire movie, because it's all scarred mm. and shit and looks evil. It was supposed to be like a metaphor for things and stuff. Yeah. But so, no. I thought that was going to be part of the reason it became sentient. Was like, um, the, the algorithms are going to be running through its robot brains... And it's going to have this memory of human cruelty Mm -hmm. and maybe pain. Mm -hmm. And that was going to be the spark Mm -hmm. that, like, it gets pissed. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. Which is a great idea, but that's not what they did. Maybe it was. But Mm -hmm. the thing is, then we're telling this story out of order. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, Because then you should have had the Ultron thing uploaded and then not work, and then send the Iron Legion out to do the pacification, and Mm -hmm. then catch the acid in the face, and then it gets, like, this flicker of, like, ow, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. Hey, these people suck. (laughs) Right? Yeah. Except that's, it's it's never even, like, They they never, never. It's, it's like, it's, it just becomes self-aware and then goes, oh, the world... I'm supposed to make peace in the world. I'll do it, that by eliminating life. It takes it takes Tony's concept. He's like, I want peace in our time. I want peace in the world. And it immediately is like, oh, I can do that. I'll wipe out humanity. Mm-hmm. That's, that's plan one. There's there's no... Yeah. Like, it makes it seem like... It, at some point, he, he says oh, that people will be given every opportunity. <laughs> we don't know what that means, though. He's like, like I'm going to drop gonna, a rock on him. Are you going to, like... They didn't. You didn't give them every opportunity. You give them no opportunity. He's like, no, 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 no. He's like, I'm going to drop a rock on him, and they got about, oh, 15 minutes to evolve. Yeah, I guess. That's about it. Yeah, well, it, I, I, that's not what I got from it. Like, again, <laughs> I felt like he was saying, well, no, I'll, I'll, I'll give them a chance, and if they don't, then I'll destroy them. But, of course, he doesn't ever give them a chance. He just tries to destroy well, like, all life on Earth. You think he was going to give them some kind of ultimatum? Or? Yeah, I thought he was going to, like, people of Earth, you know, and then the announcement, and then people, of course, show they're unworthy, and then Maybe he tries at some to point, press the button. But it got cut. I don't <laughs> know. But as it stands, the movie in this form sucks, Wow. So he shows up, and st- okay, then he shows up at the party, and he shows up all oily and, and fucked up. Yeah. Why? Well, I think I, I actually don't think he took the body of that messed up one. I think he just cobbled stuff together from parts in the lab. That's what I assumed anyway. Because like he had no like he was missing an arm, missing a leg. I don't know. There was all sorts of assembled bodies. Yeah, and uh, it shows later on that he can be in any body, so why did he grab that one? Yeah, he shows up all fucked up wearing that fucked up head. Why? I don't know. I don't... Because it's gross and dramatic effect. Especially since... Singing the Pinocchio song. Especially since... As soon as Thor fucks up his head with with Mjolnir, 
three fucking Iron Legion soldiers that he's possessed fly in. Yeah. So it clearly he can command the Iron Legion at will. Basically, he is the Iron Legion. He is. He is every... In every robot. And they establish early on, they have to wipe out every single one of them yeah, because nothing, he's in all of them. Yeah, nothing can remain. But that, again, makes no sense because isn't he on the internet? Couldn't he just, like, save copies oh, they, of himself to they, the cloud? <laughs> they hand wave that away yeah, immediately. They just, yeah, no, just get all the robots in. We're fine. Because the, the, the... Fuck spoilers. The the Vision, they're just like, uh, he erased him from the internets. Mm-hmm. Basically, they, I missed that part. Yeah, because he does that thing where he like grabs him by the throat and he's like, look into my robot eyes. And they do that thing where all the red stuff turns blue. Really? Wow. Yeah. Because that's how you represent hacking. Uh-huh. Or actually, it's all the blue oh, stuff. Oh, yeah. I it's, think, I think I, yeah. It's all the blue stuff turns Jarvis. Yeah. Orange. Yeah. And so that's how we know that all you're the right, Ultron right. has been wiped out. Mm-hmm. But it's not like... It's not like at any point we could have put him on a thumb drive. Like uh, an Ultron could have put him on a thumb drive. Yeah. You know. I mean, probably, yeah, too big, but still. Whatever. Series, series or, or an inter- it, like a separate computer or something. But fuck it. Like, you but know. It's fine. As long as we kill all the robots, it's fine. And Jesus Christ, how many of these robots got made? Jesus, yeah. Um, I also like how, you know, so he's, this whole time he's been building this rocket engines under the city. Because mm-hmm. he's going to lift up this fucking city and then drop it. On the Earth. Which, you know, again, it would have been easier if he had just, like, taken control of, Of the like, nuclear launch codes! That, or, like I said, every satellite flying above the Earth and, like, the, every space station and all that stuff. Like, mass that all together would probably be about the same size. It's like, why... The only reason he would have to do this is because of a flair for the dramatic. And I suppose that would be a reason if he just said that. Yeah. <laughs> like, he could have just as easily, like installed something under lots of, like, fault lines or major volcanoes to make the same thing happen. But no, we've got to go pick up the city we started at because symbolism or something, (laughs) lift it up, and then throw it back down again. Because reasons. So so they have to have this big fight, and then we can't just smash the engines because they're made of vibranium. Mm -hmm. Which is, like, vibranium is the catch-all reason we can't just smash things Mm -hmm. in this movie. Because he goes, he basically steals all the vibranium in the world now. He goes to Wakanda and takes all the vibranium. Which, by the way, missed opportunity to put Black Panther I in was, the Avengers I here. thought there'd be the a fuck? Black Panther cameo. I was totally expecting one. Some reference, something on a newspaper, and, anything. And you know what? And we got nothing. And you know what? Probably in a cut scene. Probably. Every time we mention something that probably should have been in the movie, probably in a cut scene. And I'm like... I'm not even, like, joking. It probably was in there. Yeah. By the way, everyone in Wakanda speaks English. <laughs> yeah. It's because mainly it was like everyone talked like it was South Africa. So probably in Marvelverse, South Africa is Wakanda. I don't know. Although Wakanda is no more because Hulk fucking flattened it. <laughs> well, him and Iron Man fucking destroyed. Uh, only downtown. <laughs> it's, I'm sure that there's more to Wakanda than downtown and one vibranium plant. <laughs> they have this gigantic smash up. Where there's, like, for some reason, Ultron now has, like, 3,000 fucking killbots. Mm-hmm. And Hawkeye, for some reason, lives. And even, again, he goes on this he goes on this big speech where he's like, we're fighting all these indestructible vibranium-made killbots. I have a fucking bow and arrow. He goes, this makes no sense. Mm-hmm. None of this makes sense. I go, no, it doesn't. Mm-hmm. Why don't you have a gun? He did have ex- his explodey arrows and all that. That's the thing. Is I was like... I, I, I went, and he never even really used explodey arrows. Yeah, he did. You a few I, times. He almost they the, the implication was that almost everything he used was a, a nifty arrow. There was never a point where he just throws an arrow into something. I swear to you. I I, I thought you know they just didn't like bother to show a lot of it. I I just thought, you know, if you wanted to to disarm the complaints that Hawkeye is useless, give him gimmick arrows. It's all he had. I assure you. All I saw was him shooting a robot and it fell down. I didn't see exploding arrows except I, that I remember, except in that one scene where he shot a bunker and the bunker exploded. Mm-hmm. And even he didn't even hit that. The Hulk took the bunker out. I didn't see. I, I saw that one time he fucking stabbed Scarlet Witch with the electro mm-hmm. arrow. 
but I didn't see any gimmick arrows. That, that's the least of my complaints about it. Is, no, it's a major movie. Okay, in this where movie. was where was the other gimmick arrows? I would swear almost everything he shot made something explode or no. I saw so many rollouts. He just shot with an arrow that went and fell down. Possible, but possible. <laughs> Apparently, I wasn't paying as much attention to that as you were. Clearly. I was too busy raging about the fact that he's now got a wife and kids in a farmhouse in Kansas. They were... Yeah. That didn't bother me as much as it bothered you. It bothered me a lot. But what bothered me, or what what I found amusing, I guess, was the fact they really seemed to be... Joss Whedon, I guess, seemed to be taking great joy in teasing the fact that Hawkeye was going to die. Like, throwing up every flag... Every really, warning I, flag I in the world. I didn't see that. Like, oh, he's got this family. He's redesigning oh, the yeah, house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The wife is like, the come back like, home to me. I've, I'm, I'm eight months pregnant. You I've, better come home. I've got this kid coming. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you've Which, got this. Which, again, that came out of nowhere, too, and made no sense. Because, like, the first line someone really speaks to Hawkeye is, so your girlfriend won't even tell. Well, he's lying. He's like, no girlfriend. Then later on, talking to my girlfriend. And then later he's on, lying. wife. Yeah, but it, it makes no sense. Because he wants to keep this out of the Avengers. I, I get that, and then he just takes them there. But they, they're throw, he's like he's throwing up all these signs that, mm. you know, he's, he's like, basically like telling his wife, like, this is going to be my last one, you know? Like, mm -hmm. uh, uh, she's she's going, uh, you haven't finished that deck, you got to come back and promise me this is the last, you know, time you're going to tear up the floor. Mm -hmm. like, okay, I will. You know, um... So like, I'm just going, warning sign, warning sign. Mm -hmm. I got a bad feeling about this, motherfucker. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, he's even like racing towards the he's he's racing towards the lifeboat going towards, you know, well, he's got to he's got to go save the little kid and get off the lifeboat. Trying to save the little kid. And you're yeah. like, here we go. You know, the, you were seeing this thing bearing down on him mm -hmm. and you're like, here we go. But instead it took out. It took out. Borat quick, Quicksilver. It took out Borat. <laughs> And it, it's almost like Joss Whedon was going, I am going to throw up every fucking cliche I can to telegraph this guy's death mm -hmm. and then not do it. Mm -hmm. it. It did, I guess, now that you mention it, kind of feel like that. So Yeah, the, fam the family is usually a dead giveaway that, that I'm so happy and I love my wife so much and we live in, we live such a, a humble, homely, homey existence. It was, it was actually to the point where he was trying so hard, I knew he wouldn't do it. <laughs> it really was. I knew he wasn't going to bite it. It's like you tipped, you tipped your hand. He was trying way too hard. Mm -hmm. He, it, it, it was almost. If he'd have gone like, I've only got two days till we're you know, like, yeah, I'm too old for this shit. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. something like that. You know, especially because like, yeah, the, just before he reached the lifeboat, he was talking to I think uh, Witch, uh, 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 Black Widow. He's he's going. You know, if I if I you know tore up the upstairs, tore up the upstairs uh, guest room, I could make a really good rec room. You know, mm -hmm. I'm going. Oh Jesus Christ! You okay? Too subtle. <laughs> oh, what was else? Uh, uh, I, I was also impressed with Nick Fury's ability to pull a fully armed and crude helicarrier out of his ass. He had it in storage. Oh yeah, <laughs> I bet he, he did. Has, he had to keep one for just in case. I bet he did. And then have all those people to staff it. Yeah. Mm. Fully armed, loaded. Fueled. Fueled. I wonder what kind of experimental rocket fuel those things run on that he had enough of to fuel it. Fuck government oversight, man. Mm. You know, I, I just wonder what the price tag on that thing was. They're not going to miss it. <laughs> the, the shield got decommissioned. I mean, yeah. they, the, whole thing, the whole thing with this movie is that the governments don't do anything. Who counts helicarriers? No, no government does anything. Like, at this point, like... Wakanda should have sanctions against the U.S. for fucking up their entire city. I don't even know how much a standard aircraft carrier costs, but, you know. Mm -hmm. A helicarrier? A helicarrier, one that flies. We just hand those out for free in it's, case. It's not like we're counting those when the shield got decommissioned, you know. <laughs> hey, Nick, where, Nick, where's that fucking helicarrier? Oh, there's one, two, three. Where's the four? Oh, fuck it. Who cares? You know, you <laughs> Oh, that one bl blew up. What do you think those things blew cost? Up. Six billion dollars? Probably more. I think it 
that's that's the price of like a stealth bomb or so. <laughs> so they're like, you know, you steal six hundred dollars, you can just disappear. You steal six billion, they will find you unless they think you're already dead. <laughs> Actually, they do think he's dead. That's true. Whatever. <laughs> but he just shows up with a fucking helicarrier. I'm like, oh Christ! Mm -hmm. I knew he would too. Again, I knew he would because oh, as soon as they were like. He's like, yeah, come it, with me, agent. No, no, as soon as they were on the the rising city going into the stratosphere. It's the only way off. Going, there's no way to get off. We're not leaving all these people. Let's just sacrifice ourselves because we can't was stupid. get them off. And then I was like, well, obviously they're all going to get off. So then, ta-da, hello, helicarrier. Yeah, I like Cap is all, you know. I wasn't suggesting we leave. Why not? What can you do here? Cap You're going to die because you can't save these people so everybody else on the ground gets... Whatever. The cap is like, we're not leaving as if there's one single civilian on this place. And I go, yeah, it's a very noble sentiment, Cap, but you're stupid. And then, Scar uh, I keep calling Scarlet Witch. Black Widow is it's like, I wasn't suggesting we leave. I go, why? Why? Shouldn't why, you? Like, why would you not leave? Like, like going, down, leave. going down with the ship doesn't help anybody. Why would we not leave the meteor that's about to hit? <laughs> then again, the Earth is going to end anyway. I suppose. Well, like, they they never say we're not going to be able to stop the whatever, but oh, if, we, yeah, can't yeah, the, yeah, if we can't get the people off, we have to stay here. Right. So what? Like, yeah, they, we're not going to save, like, what's the point in going down with the fucking city? I yeah. don't get it. Yeah, I didn't get that Like, part. okay, you, you gave it your best shot, Cap. You just, go, yeah, whatever. It was a stupid <laughs> scene, and I hated it. Then there was that weird scene where they're playing... The basically the video game level where they're playing the defense of the of the bomb yeah. that was going to destroy the jet engines where they're yeah. like if only one of them gets through we're fucked yeah so there's like a zillion killbots and they're all surrounding the Avengers and they've all got an equal number to fight off including fucking Hawkeye where you know again I, I, I'm even sticking up for Hawkeye most times but he should not have an equal number of Ultrons to fight <laughs> off. And he's trying his best, motherfucker. He's like, nyeh, nyeh, nyeh. fucking Thor. He's, he's like, mm, 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 mm. like Thor, <laughs> Jesus Christ. You got to start laying down some area effect spells. Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ, man. And he's like, mm, bum, 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 bum. <laughs> he's flying around. He's perfectly safe. Mm -hmm. Turn, turn, turn. <sighs> yeah. Did not like this movie. Mm. There was a lot to dislike about it. And the stuff that you that I liked about it was not enough to redeem it. The movie should have ended at the party. <laughs> with them trying to lift the fucking hammer. Just roll credits. They're like, yeah, we got the scepter. Everything's happy. <laughs> just make it a DVD extra. Mm -hmm. Not good. Yeah. And then, I mean, like the... the most interesting part is when you finally get to the vision being created. He, where did he go? But what do you mean? Sorry. Yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead with the, you, you finish. <laughs> <laughs> he gets created out of Jarvis and what would have been Ultron's like final form out of like the fake bio skin and yeah, the vibranium. vibranium. And then he's got the, the witch jewel on his forehead. The, the infinity gauntlet mm -hmm. jewel, the mind gem. The mind gem. Um, so he's, he exists now and everyone's like, are you good? And he's like, yes. And they're like, we don't believe you. And he's like, hammer. And they're like, okay, you're good. Which I don't think that means he can, worthy to wield, wield Mjolnir. I think that, I forget what his powers are entirely, but I think he can actually change the molecular density of shit, <laughs> which I, I think he can actually just change the density of the hammer, but whatever. I, I don't think I know for a fact he's not going for. I know for a fact he's not worthy of wielding Mjolnir, because fuck I that shit. I think that's shit. what they were trying to say in the movie. Fuck though. that. I, like, I really think they were like, well, he's so, he's a new pure being, and he's worthy. Fuck it. I think that's what they were going for, that is I some didn't buy it. bullshit. That's some bullshit, mm -hmm. if that's true. Yeah. Where like, did he go, though? At the final battle, like, he fucking, like, choke slams Ultron... And then, like, Ultron punches him, and then he just vanishes. He vanishes for, like, for a while. For, like, 15 he saves, minutes. He saves Scarlet Witch when the everything's going down, finally. Um, He's gone for, like, 15 minutes. Yeah. I don't know. That's a good question. I my yeah. Oh, yeah, that 15 minutes where I said they ran out of budget to, yeah. to show him. 
to like animate his cape or something yeah. like that. Like it really, it's he's supposed to be like this ultimate machine. Like he's indestructible. He can do anything. He's got that big beam from his head and shit like that. But yeah, he he clears him from the internet, and then he's just gone. Yeah, there is a significant time lapse where we don't know where he is. Because again, I, maybe they cut that out. I, I'm they not, show where he's what he's doing in that point of time, and we don't see it. That's one of those things where I don't know that, but I know that they cut <laughs> that because I was like, I want to see the fucking vision. Mm -hmm. This is like they've been building up to this for two fucking hours, mm -hmm. and now he, where did he go? Mm -hmm. And then he just shows up again, and I go, where the fuck were you? <laughs> I, uh, yeah. yeah. I, I don't know. I, I just It reminds me, like, I wanted to, I just want to go back and play, like, the arcade X-Men game. Was, was, there, was a, there was an arcade Avengers game, right? I know, I know the Vision was yeah. in one of those. Mm -hmm. God, I want to play that again. <laughs> uh, okay. I'm starting to rant. Yeah. But... I hate everything, and I hated this movie. <laughs> I I wish I hadn't been disappointed by this movie. I, I really, really wanted to like it. Me too. Me too. Like, the, I loved the last one. I, I've loved all the Captain America movies. I loved all the Iron Man movies except the third one, Ugh. which, as far as I'm concerned, doesn't exist. La 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 la. Um, Captain America 2 was great. Yeah, it was very good. Um... Although I, I didn't really like the first Thor movie. I didn't see... The, there was a second one, right? And it, yeah. I didn't see that one. You know, honestly, I have not seen Thor 2. No. Which is strange. Yeah. But I liked Thor. I liked, um... Yeah. I've liked pretty much every one of the Marvel movies that I've seen except Iron Man 3, which was balls. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't... Um, I even like The Incredible Hulk. I like that one a lot. Mm -hmm. Um... This one, though, it... I don't know. Did they did they overreach themselves? Was it just a bad plot? Uh, did they just have goals they didn't know how to write themselves to? This is a bad script. I could tell. For, I could tell you for a fact. This is a bad script. Um, even if they, I just know. Even even with the hour they'd added in, if it's an hour longer, this is a really bad script mm. because no movie. That involves fucking Ultra needs to be that long. No wonder they cut an hour out of it. Yeah, it feels like they tried to get too complex, realized they had to cut it back a little, and then the complexity was lost in bad edits and yeah. jumbling it together. I mean, this ain't the fellowship of the fucking ring. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no way it needed to be this long. Mm -hmm. So this just screams of desperate need of rewrites. And that's before my complaints, you know, mm -hmm. just ignoring that. If you have a script that equates to fucking three and a half hours or whatever it would have turned out to be, you've got to go back to the drawing. You yeah, go it, back means, to it means something went wrong. Something went wrong. But, you know, they had to have known that when they had the final cut of this after an hour, that this was an incoherent mess. Mm-hmm. So, I, and, you know, bottom line when it comes to the Black Widow, I think if you've got problems with any kind of sexist angle on this, I think whatever, I think whatever problem that you might have with this could still be valid in the final version of it, but I, I think you're getting an incomplete, I know you're getting an incomplete picture. Yeah, I, I really, really feel like we lost something in there, a big, it feels like a chunk, like it does feel like they skipped lines or something in that whole conversation. Um, and if, again, if they didn't, then yeah, that is the dumbest thing I've ever fucking heard. But, um, um, you know, again, what kind of sterilization is it? That's what I want to know. If it's just, I would say tied, chemical. if it's chemical, well, I mean, she still has eggs. Like I said, she could get a surrogate, so she's not completely, it's comic book sterilization. It, yeah. I'm, I'm going to assume it's comic book in that, like, Magic computers and science do everything. So she has. The, it's the, it's complete. But then, what if she does? If she has not even got eggs, then isn't she going through menopause? So how? Are I you? don't know. Never mind. Sorry. It just I wonder these. Let's things. no. Let's go into detail on this one. <laughs> Continue, please. Let's talk about menopause. I'll just I'll just I'm learning. <laughs> no, this is please. This is the floor. The yeah. floor is here. No, that's fine. No. Um, but, but yeah, I don't know. I just the whole the whole thing was. If if it was indeed told the way they meant it to be taken in the movie, though, as we saw it, then yeah, stupidest, that was stupid. 
you're not it's a not monster because you can't have <laughs> children. Um, and honestly, in the life that you're leading, I would think that you'd be glad they're not a complication. Also, you can fucking adopt. I'm really yeah. sick of that. Adoption isn't an, an, an option for everyone because I can't have them. I can't squeeze them out of my own <laughs> vagina so they don't count. How much trouble do you think Avengers 3 is in? Given they showed the reveal of what the team is going to be. Uh, mm. They've essentially phased out the entire team. Yeah. Um, aside yeah. from uh, essentially Captain America and Black Captain Widow. America and Black and Widow, we'll see yeah. if they even make it. Yeah. Um, so now it's going to be what? Like War Machine, Scarlet Witch, The Vision. Falcon. Falcon. <sighs> Maybe they'll come up with somebody else in the next movie, but... I, there has to be someone else, but I can't I think feel like of them. I feel like I missed someone. That we saw. Maybe not. I no. Uh, uh, no, you said Scarlet Witch. Yeah, that's about it. Yeah, so they they might have to introduce other people. Um, I don't think it's a bad team, but man, it's 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 very very second stringer, and it's very very much yeah. not not the stars. I mean, anymore. why don't you throw a fucking swordsman and U.S. agent in there? Like, <laughs> um, I yeah, the third one. I mean, here's the thing. I think people are, are really pissed off about that as well. Yeah. And that's I mean, not it's, fair. It's it's not, but again, like, I I know a lot of people who would go and see movies primarily because Robert Downey Jr. is in and, them. And that's the point, is I think it's remarkable that they got Robert Downey Jr. for this many movies. Yeah. Three Iron Man movies and two Avengers, you should be fucking thankful for that. Mm-hmm. I mean... It, these people do have other things to do, other movies they might want to be in. I mean, that's a huge commitment of time mm-hmm. to to be in five movies. Yeah. Uh, wow. Yeah, it's been how many years now? A lot. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, the guy has other stuff to do, and although I thought that was a strange write-off in the sunset for him. Yeah. Um, weird. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this looking at the looking at the secondary team, I would watch. I, I would watch that team going on there, but it definitely feels like. You, you watch that. You watch that second team swoop down, and you're like, "Oh, mm-hmm. <laughs> there's, a, there's a bit of a drop off there." So you're like, "Oh, goody, we got the Falcon, and we got War Machine." Mm-hmm. Yay! Goody! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> War Machine. Mm-hmm. Okay. Although I do like, I, I do like. Um, Although now I wonder if they'll go into, like, the whole romance with the Scarlet Witch and the Vision. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, no. Because I almost got that feeling when he rescues her at the end. Like, they could they could swoop into that now. Oh, that's got to be awkward. Because mm-hmm. you got to wonder if the Vision has a vibranium dork. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you. Never say those words again. Because the vibranium dork vibrate. Ugh. Get out. Oh, yeah. Get out. Let me show you my little Jarvis. <laughs> You're the worst. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and on that note... <laughs> I think we're done. Avengers, disassemble! <laughs> See you next time! <laughs> <laughs>